Warning! This video contains frank discussion of matters of sexual morality. Just thought you might want to know. Hey! Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This episode, we'll be dealing with two related fruits of the Spirit, chastity and modesty. Chastity and modesty both relate to the body. How do we treat the body, both our body and the bodies of others? Why is this important? For similar reasons. Chastity is specifically to do with the proper treatment of sex, and to understand why, you need to know what sex is exactly. Sex is an ability given to us by God, one of the highest abilities that we have. By its nature, it gives us the power to do something very special, create another human life. This is special because the power to create intelligent life is one of the most unique and distinctive abilities that God has, something that only he can really do from scratch. Because this ability is so close to the ability of God, it naturally involves a great sense of pleasure, and a great accomplishment when it's done right. Sex has a huge potential for good because it makes it possible for human beings to bring forth other human beings, and those human beings can do good as well, and they can have children who can do more good, and so on and so forth. These same children might do evil as well, but sex itself is a good act. However, although sex is good, that doesn't mean that you can do whatever it takes to get it. Remember, we can never do evil so that good may come of it. That's where chastity comes in. Unchastity is translated in a number of different ways in modern Bibles. The Old Testament translates it as adultery or fornication, both of which are definitely unchaste acts, but don't have quite the same meaning as unchastity. The New Testament frequently uses the words impurity or immorality to refer to unchastity instead. However, in pretty much all of these verses, the point is to address certain kinds of unchastity, for the purpose of pointing out that some actions, when associated with sex, are wrong. For example, it's wrong to commit adultery, because by doing this, you're betraying your spouse. It's wrong to fornicate, because by doing this, you're refusing to provide a healthy family relationship for your children, and so forth. There are many other distinctions in sexual ethics, and the virtue of chastity is all about understanding them and having the strength of will to control your actions in this area, to make sure you're doing the right thing. I may go into more on this later. Modesty is related to chastity. Sometimes people are tempted to act unchastely by things they see, and sometimes they can be tempted to sin just by looking at a person who's dressed a certain way. In fact, according to Matthew 5.28, you can sin just by looking at a person lustfully, and some styles of dress can make it harder to resist the sin of lust. Modesty is partly about this, wearing clothes that make it easier for outside observers to resist the temptation to lust after you, and harder for them to objectify you. Why? Simple. Do you want to be in a relationship where all the other person cares about is your body? No? Well, the best way to prevent that is with modesty. You want to know how important modesty is? Check out Proverbs 11.22. Modesty is listed there as discretion in my translation. I think you get a chuckle out of the way they put it. In the end, chastity and modesty are both about different sides of the same thing. Respect yourself, your body, your spouse, their body, and your children's rights. And take all of that into account whenever sex comes up. Sex is a powerful gift, and we should never try to use it for sin. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.